in Renton, Washington with the Seahawks, and I'm here with Seattle quarterback Geno Smith. And, Geno, I've got to start off by asking you, you're a confident person. We spoke almost exactly a year ago. You thought you were going to play well last year. But you were probably in the minority of people who thought that you were going to prove yourself. And you went out. You threw 30 touchdown passes. You threw for almost 4,300 yards, far and away your best year as an NFL player. Were you remotely surprised at what you did last year? Uh, I mean, I wasn't. You know, I really wasn't surprised. Um, honestly, felt like I could have played better. You know, I felt like I left a little bit out there. And uh, I think that was like my motivation coming into the offseason is, uh, you know, try and get better. You know, I know I can be better. It was my first year starting in a long time. And, uh, you know, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Tell me if you can pick out a time last year where you're playing the game and you said, man, I knew I could do this. Maybe nobody else did. Was there a game, especially early on, where you felt like, I mean, obviously a very emotional opening game, right. you know, when Russell Wilson comes back and you guys win. But when when did it occur to you that, you know, hey, I can do exactly what I said I was going to do? I mean, to be honest with you, I would say back in like 2016 when I was on the Giants. And then I would say uh, the year prior uh, when I, you know, got to start those three games here in Seattle, um, we went one and two, you know, but I had thrown like five touchdowns, one interception on a tip pass. Um, and I just felt like the game had, you know, really slowed down for me. I felt like I had ownership of the offense. I knew exactly what, you know, Shane wanted to do and how Pete wanted to do things. Shane Waldron, Shane your Waldron, offensive yes. coordinator, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just kind of felt like um, I was being able to control the game more. Um, you know, something that I, you know, like I said, back when I was on the Giants, I started to feel that. And then when I got back in some action, um, you know, I think that was 2020 when I, when I played that three-game stretch, you know, I felt like I could control the game. And so coming into the next season, uh, you know, I just felt like from game one, you know, if I play the way that I intend to play, if I just be myself, um, then I'll be able to do some good things. Were you ever thinking during the course of last year, man, I'm really glad I finally got this chance because this is really me. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I you know, I thought, I think, you know, when Coach Carroll, after the Dallas game, you know, I played, <laughs> funny part about last year, I played 21 games. I played every single preseason game, every single snap in the regular season, and then the playoffs. And uh, I think after the, the Dallas game, Coach Carroll named me the starter. And uh, that was it for me, you know, I was just appreciative of the opportunity uh, of him seeing something in me, of the organization seeing something in me to give me that opportunity. And uh, for me, it was just about going and proving them right. You know, I know that uh, they have a lot of faith in me and a lot of confidence in me, but I want to go out there and play the right way and, and make sure that everyone around here um, is proud of the way I play. So let's talk a little bit about your off season and what you have done specifically this year to try to be a better player. You said you felt you left some things on the field. Yeah. How do you think Geno Smith's going to be better in 2023? You know, I think it starts with, um, I, you know, in the off season, I really, you know, changed my diet. Um, you know, I wanted to be, you know, stronger, faster, uh, just a better athlete. And so it started with the uh, off season training. Didn't take a break from the season. Uh, what was your diet? Okay, so now what's your diet like? What do you do? So I've become a, a full pescatarian. I haven't uh, had chicken or beef in about four or five months now. You miss it? Uh, I don't. I thought I would, but I actually don't uh, miss it. Um, you know, I've been eating really healthy, really clean. You're uh, in the right city to be a pescatarian, yeah, a lot, aren't you? Yeah, there's a lot of great, uh, great uh, food out here, a lot of great fish. And um, what is your, What's your favorite fish? Um, I love cod. I love salmon. Um all of it, really. I try it all, but I, yeah. love, I love a few of them. And, um, you know, for me, like, getting my body back right, you know, as I've grown, uh, my body's gotten better. I, you know, got a six-pack again. I'm, you know, feeling stronger in the weight room. I'm waking up with a lot more energy, a lot more, you know, juice, and, and just uh, attacking every single day. And so um, I, I think self-improvement is, is really where I'm at in my life. Um, constant self-improvement every single day is an opportunity to get better. Uh, I'm in the right place for that because Coach Cal preaches that. Uh, that's his mantra, to compete every day. And so the competition now is with myself. Um, how much better can I get on a daily basis? 
Um, how much stronger can I be? How, how, how consistent can I be in my footwork and my reads and my accuracy? Um, and then just leadership. You know, every single part of my game's got to improve. And, and that's um, something I'm really taking ownership of. So what specifically in a football sense did you say to yourself, I really want to get better at X this year? And what did you work on throughout this offseason? Uh, you know, really, I want to be a, a more mobile, using my legs a little bit more. Um, you know, I was great. I'm all, I've always been a great pocket passer. I, I still feel like I don't really, you know, do enough of the stuff on the move and enough of the scramble and um, some of the extra stuff that is not, you know, within the play. And so being able to create off schedule and then, um, you know, in the red zone, you know, being able to attack a little bit more in the red zone, score some more touchdowns. You know, 30 touchdowns was great, but I think, we could, you know, a bunch of those were just, you know, deep balls and outside the red zone. So if we can, you know, add to that, by having more touchdowns in the red zone, our offense becomes that more efficient and explosive. And then, um, you know, third downs. You know, third downs is a critical down in the NFL. And uh, it's the money down uh, for both sides. And so being able to be one of the better teams in third down, uh, that will help us, uh, you know, allow us to stay on the field longer and keep our defense off the field. And, uh, you know, when you talk about complementary football, that's what we want to do. You know, we want to make sure that we're playing complementary football and doing all the things that are necessary to winning. And um, those are some things that I feel like I could have gotten better at. The other day I watched your preseason game against Dallas and saw Jackson Smith and Jigba, yeah. you know, really show up on the field. Tell me what you have seen in him and tell me what you think he will add to this offense. Uh, you know, from day one, he's just a natural, you know, catcher of the football. He can track it. He's all hands. He catches everything with his hands. Um, he, he's a great route runner. Uh, for, for his size and stature, he's very tough. He plays a lot bigger than his size says. You know, I know a lot of people like to harp on his speed, but um, he's running past a lot of really fast guys. And so he's got that football speed, that knack to making big plays that you look for. He understands the game really well. And, um, you know, with the guys that we already have, he's a great complement to our offense. You know, you got a true X receiver in DK Metcalf who, you, you know, you better double him or he, he can go off. You got a true Z. Or, or a guy that we can move around in Tyler Lockett, who's been a consistent, you know, thousand yard, 10 touchdown guy in this league for nine years now. And so you add uh, Jackson and then the tight ends that we have, and then the running back room that we have, along with this young offensive line that's just growing, and in my opinion, can be one of the best in the league. Um, it makes a QB's job a lot more easy. And so Jackson is a great compliment to this team. And he's also a humble young man. And so we, we enjoy having him. I want to ask you a little bit about your mental process and and basically I'm sure that you have had some young kids and I'm sure you've counseled some young kids but I wonder a story like yours where you came into the league and you played early and then you go almost a decade without being a regular starter yep. in the NFL and I wonder what advice do you give to young players or, or even just young people yeah. who hear about your story? You know, I think the important thing to do is to take ownership, not make any excuses, um, not look for a cop out, don't look for any excuses. Instead, um, find ways to get better. Find uh, reasons to get better. Find your why. You know, why do you do this? Um, that'll keep you in it when maybe no one else believes. And then, like I said, man, just owning owning every single little mistake. You know, if it's something that you did that caused it to happen, you got to own up to it and then get better from it. That's the only way to learn. And uh, yeah, I've been able to talk to a lot of young guys and a lot of guys on this team who are probably in a similar position that I was in where, you know, they feel like they are capable starters, but haven't gotten the opportunity. And, you know, if you, can, if you let that consume your mind, um, then you'll miss out on the opportunity to work for it. So just train as if you already are. Believe in yourself. Um, the ultimate confidence comes from within. It, it should never come from you know anyone on the outside. And um, you know, be a self-starter. Getting up at you know 6 a.m., going to the gym, writing notes, studying, um, reading. You know, all those things you have to do it. No one can tell you to do it. And so uh, I just took ownership of everything, and I made sure that when my opportunity came, I'd be ready for it. If I asked you one or two things you learned when you were not playing that have made you a better player what what did you learn by watching and by being around other quarterbacks 
Um, I would say, you know, one of the things I learned is um, the importance of note taking. Uh, I, I, I'm very, very um, particular in the way that I write notes and, and take notes. How do you write notes? Are you, are you very specific? Very, very specific. And um, I, I have, I mean, piles and piles of notebooks over the course of the years. And if, you, you know, I, you know, one day we may have to go through them and, and, <laughs> and you guys will see that um, day by day, I've, you know, consistently taking notes even if it's something that I know already I'll write it down as if I don't you know and I, and I listen to what coach says I'm, I'm I'm big on being coachable you know I want to be coached I want to be pushed and so um, the amount of notes that I take it just allows me to you know remember things way better than if I didn't take notes and um, another thing that I learned just from the quarterbacks I've been around is uh, the importance of leadership and, and positive leadership um, everyone's got a different style Everyone comes from a different place. Uh, everyone reacts to things differently, but everyone needs that person that's positive and uplifting and gonna, you know, make them believe that things are gonna be great, even if it's not looking good. Yeah. And um, you know, that that's something I really learned from Russell. Man, he's got that unwavering belief, and you know, I I I, I, I uh, commend him for that because that's, you know, that's something that I didn't always have, and I've learned that no matter what it looks like, you can always find a way. And so, um, those are two things I've learned. We'll end with this. You had to have had a moment with Pete Carroll after last season, during this off season. You had to have a moment where not just maybe gratitude for giving you this shot, but maybe gratitude from him as well for having shown faith in you and you really gave that faith back and you performed exactly how this team thought you could at your peak. Have you had a moment with Pete to talk about that? Uh, I think every day for us is that moment. You know, knowing how Coach Carroll is, he always says it, man, anybody can do it one time. You know, it's what are you going to do next? You know, we're not focused on what we did in the past. Uh, instead, we're looking looking forward to just, you know, living in the moment. And today is another opportunity for us to get better. It's a Tell the Truth Monday. <laughs> we're out here, you know, uh, on, the, on the lawn, and um, we're just focusing on a day-by-day -day step What is a Tell process. the Truth Monday? Tell the Truth Monday is uh, what we do after games. And uh, we go in there into the meeting room, and um, we assess what the game was like, whether it's good or bad. We, we tell the truth about it, and, and um, we don't hide from it. We don't run from it. Instead, we look at ways to get better. And so uh, the gratitude for us is the, the fact that we get to come in and do this thing every single day together. I'm very appreciative of, of Coach Carroll and, uh, and this organization and this city. And uh, I'm grateful um, just for being here. And so I want to show that gratitude with my hard work every day and, uh, you know, just with my humbleness. And so I hopefully, uh, you know, that's something I'm doing. I think you and the 49ers could have a pretty good battle with this division this year. What do you think? I think so. They're a great team. They're a great team. Uh, they had a great year last year. Um, they're returning a lot of great players, and uh, you know we're, we're we're you know right right there, right there fighting for it. So uh, I look forward to those matchups. Gino, good luck. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.